try again. So, in the next, uh, I don't know, I guess in the next couple of videos, while we're waiting for me to finish reading the stories that I want to review, I would like to talk some more about uh, my favorite author and yours, probably. Or not, not everybody's favorite author, but Stephen King. And whether you like him or you hate him, you, you can't deny the influence that he's had. Not just on horror literature, but on pop culture in general. I mean, he's a, an amazingly prolific author and has been for almost 50 years. And he's had a powerful influence on so many, many, many authors that I know, myself included. I mean, so much so that if I ever win a lottery, I want to buy a house in New Brunswick just because it's like five hours away from Bangor, Maine, and I can go and visit and take the Stephen King tour. That's how much I love Stephen King. So, but, despite being a lifelong Stephen King fan, and also my mother was a lifelong Stephen King fan, and I inherited all of her books when she, when she passed away and had to move them all. <laughs> yeah, you, they're... You think there's not such a thing as too many books until you have to move them all. But there are still some gaps in my Stephen King reading oeuvre. Um, no, I'm not going to count the books that are relatively recent, uh, I, just because I haven't gotten around to them yet. I haven't read Sleeping Beauties. I have, I have, I bought and own um, the Institute and If It Bleeds, but I just haven't had a chance to read them yet. But what I want to look at is the stories from the last, you know, from, from many years ago that I still, I don't know why, it, maybe they just didn't appeal to me, or maybe I tried to read them and stopped, but I'm going to give you a short little list, there aren't many of them, of Stephen King books that I have not read and why. So number five is The Talisman. Um, my mother always bought the new Stephen King in hardcover, whenever, as soon as it came out. So we always had, so every year, there was a new Stephen King hardcover on the bookshelf. And this one was no exception. So the, the nice big hardcovers from the 80s with the font and and, you know, the gold foil, or the kind of goldy look to it. Um, it was a nice book. And I remember picking it up and flipping through it a little bit. But it just never appealed to me. Um, probably, I don't know, it, it kind of always struck me as sort of a dark fantasy. And one of the early forays into Stephen King's sort of world jumping back and forth. And... I haven't quite made up my mind about Peter Straub. Couldn't get through Ghost Story, so we'll see. Um, maybe I'll read it someday. Uh, and that also goes for the sequel to The Talisman. Uh, I would want to call it Bleak House. I think it's Black House. Bleak House was Dickens. <laughs> so, number four, The Green Mile. Never saw the movie either. Um, I mean, I know what it's about, kind of. When it was first published, it was published in a series of books, of smaller books. And I was meant to read them all at once. So I was waiting for it either to be published together in one book or for all the volumes to be together. And for some reason, I don't think my mother ever had all the volumes together. So I just never got around to reading it. And I never bought them on my own, either. So, um, again, I'll probably read it someday. But I liked Rita Hayworth and Shawshank Redemption, so I just didn't see a reason to read another prison story by Stephen King. Or see the movie. Although I, I will say, I do like the cast of that one. And I've heard good things about it, I just never got around to it. Uh, the next one, The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. So there was a time in the 90s where Stephen King seemed to publish 
<coughs> excuse me, a number of books about people sitting in a room alone talking to themselves. And this kind of struck me as the same kind of thing. And I'm not interested in baseball, so the story never really appealed to me. That's all. <laughs> I, I know it seems like a dumb reason not to read something, but... Number two. Oh dear. From a Buick 8. Now this, this one was a book that I actively disliked. I didn't like the pacing of it. I didn't like the characters. You know, after I think 50 pages of it not going anywhere, I just closed it. And I, I don't think I threw it across the room, but I wanted to. I absolutely hated From a Buick 8. So... I mean, there have been other books of King's that I really didn't like that I still finished, but this one, just couldn't. And the last one, number one, The Dark Tower, the entire series. Yes, I'm one of few Stephen King fans who have not read The Dark Tower. I think I got through the first chapter of The Gunslinger and didn't like it, didn't like the story, didn't like the character, found it a snooze fest closed it, never looked back. And part of the reason I actually stopped reading King through the 90s and early aughts was that every all roads, like every story, Insomnia and Desperation and Hearts in Atlantis and Ewer and every story, just all roads led back to the Dark Tower. And I just didn't give a crap about it. And I've had so many people tell me how great it is and you know how it's like all of the culmination of all the characters and this and that and you know what? I just never liked it. And I just never had any interest in it. So, The Dark Tower. So, maybe someday, maybe I'll read them. Uh, maybe I'll retire and have nothing else to do. I've got all the books. But right now, The Dark Tower just never appealed to me. So, there you go. There's a little bit of insight into how a big Stephen King fan might not necessarily like or want to read all of his books. Hope you're reading lots of horror. Have a great day.